close, Salesforce.com reported a better than expected earnings per share number, but failed to beat some key metrics that I follow, including growth in billings and free cash flow. And while Salesforce did give a strong full-year projection, its short-term forecast was indeed below expectations, something that's highly unusual for this very consistent cloud-based juggernaut, causing its stock to plummet in after hours. Let's talk with its CEO, Mark Benioff, to find out why it missed projections. Mark, welcome back to Mad Money. Jim, it's great to be with you. All right, so we've got to uh, dig through the numbers because uh, there's something unusual here. You have a, a basically what I regard as being a top-line guidance rate, uh, raise, which is terrific. But the, in the interim, some of the numbers that we see before we get the full year are not what Wall Street was looking for. They're a little bit disappointing versus what Wall Street's looking for. But you mentioned that despite significant uh, Forex headwinds, is it Forex headwinds? Or some might say, well, listen, the uh, competition's finally caught up to Benny off in the cloud. Well, number one, Jim, uh, let's uh, look at the top and bottom line where we have uh, beaten. And, uh, you know, on the top and bottom line, it was an absolutely great quarter. But as you've pointed out, uh, foreign exchange was just brutal in the quarter. As you know, not only did we have Brexit, but we had this precipitous fall of the Great British Pound, which is how we roll up our European currencies. And that dramatically affected our revenue uh, in the quarter. In fact, we've lost $150 million in revenue for the year, Jim. Uh, through this kind of foreign exchange uh, change. And I'll tell you that even through all of that, though, we are raising our revenue guidance for the year. Okay, so if, 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 if you don't necessarily want to back in 150 because it is what it is. But when you say that uh, next quarter non-GAAP is 2021, I see a lot of people looking for 24 cents. Uh, three cents would be still uh, more than what you lost in the currency. Well, Jim, I think that, you know, what you see is that um, we have had a, um, uh, a number of issues that we are working on inside uh, the company that have been uh, very exciting. You saw the uh, M&A activity right. that we uh, have uh, done this quarter. That, of course, has waited on our uh, numbers. And yet, of course, we are delivering these great quarter, quarterly numbers. Number two, we did have the foreign uh, exchange situation that we just talked about. And number three, we did see a bit of softness in the United States at the very end of the second quarter. And these three things together really are kind of what is giving us, I would say, an appropriately conservative view for the third and fourth quarter. But let's talk about that softness, because a lot of companies uh, have not seen that in the hardware business, but we haven't heard from other software companies. You're the first one to report in this area. Is this uh, across industries, or is it because uh, some, some particular customers went elsewhere? No, I really think it's uh, very specific to the very end of our uh, second quarter in the United States specifically. We saw a bit of softness. Um, there's probably a number of reasons why we saw that softness. None of the reasons that we see are especially uh, significant. They aren't competitive. They aren't regards to uh, uh, other types of macro situations. It really has to do with our own execution in the United States in the quarter at the end, and that is that is where we are right now. Could that be uh, related to the new acquisitions? Because those are new, and it's not necessarily the same team. You're no. trying to integrate that. I'm trying to, look, not. I have to try to pin it down because <laughs> not. it's an unusual yeah. situation to have to ask you about softness in the U.S. because I'm only used to seeing U.S. be blown away. Well, the numbers have been just phenomenal this year. And I think as, you, as we look at all of our regions throughout the world, uh, you know, we saw Europe uh, really had great performance in the quarter. Asia Pacific had great performance in the quarter. Japan uh, had a record quarter. And it was really just a bit of softness at the end of the uh, quarter in the United States that is uh, reflected in those numbers. And you obviously must think it's going to come back or you wouldn't be raising the full year. What gives you confidence that the softness is going to, uh, let's say, dissipate? Well, we really just have had incredible throughput for the whole year. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, Jim, we should be raising a lot more than we are. Right. It's really this foreign exchange situation that's holding us back. Uh, otherwise, we would really be blowing our numbers out for the, for the second quarter. But we're not able to do that because we have, you know, had such a significant appreciation of our revenue uh, with foreign exchange. Would, would there be, uh, in the U.S., uh, softness be interpreted as being there were some customers that didn't close, or is it just a general weakness in certain industries? Because you know we're, we're getting a, a, a little more robust economy in the country, so it's surprising to hear anyone not feel that the U.S. isn't a little better. 
I really believe it was, you know, we see this now and then. I mean, we've been in the software industry a long time, and every now and then, in a specific geography, you might get a specific softness. It could be related to an execution issue. It could be rela related to a focus issue. But I just, I really believe that it has to do with us and our own, and our, and our, and our own sales process in the United States. And you know, I have a lot of confidence in the second half. Our pipelines are really full. Our competitive win rates are excellent. Uh, across the board, we just have, you know, have had so much success. I mean, I, I look at, you know, one of these, one of these deals that we closed in the second quarter was with UH. G United Health Group, an incredible transaction, a nine-figure transaction. Again, it's the third quarter in a row that we closed a nine-figure transaction. It was amazing. Well, I, let me just ask you, because I know there's an amazing piece about you in, in, in Forbes, cover story, talking about how you did covet LinkedIn and that perhaps you're looking at other acquisitions. I have to tell you, you're doing artificial intelligence up at the Einstein. Look forward to hearing that when I'm out at, at Dreamforce in October. But I was trying to figure, listen, LinkedIn, social, mobile, cloud, artificial intelligence, what would you do with Twitter? Well, I have to tell you something amazing, Jim, which is, you know, and I'm going to have to cue back on what you just said about the Forbes article where we kind of reveal that we do have Einstein coming for Dreamforce. Uh, we've talked a lot about social, mobile, and cloud and the importance of that, but we are going to start talking about artificial intelligence as a major driver for all of our products uh, going forward. And we're going to reveal at Dreamforce, uh, Salesforce Einstein. You're going to see it built into our sales product with Sale, you know, Sales Cloud Einstein and Service Cloud Einstein for our service product and Marketing Cloud Einstein and Analytics Cloud Einstein. And it's amazing what, what is now possible, whether it's machine learning, deep learning, machine intelligence, um, that we're able to do today that we weren't able to do just a couple of years ago. And our customers are going to get that for the first time uh, in October. All right, last question. It sounds like that you do not need to do an acquisition and that, that LinkedIn occurred, Demandware occurred, and now you're moving on and focusing back on the on Einstein and your new, pla your, uh, new um, well, platform, so to speak. Well, number one, you know, if you look at our M&A strategy, it's really been incredibly disciplined and very focused, and specifically in regards to artificial intelligence, you know that we um, uh, acquired a number of companies, spent about $650 million, put them together with 175 data scientists and created this uh, Salesforce Einstein platform. And amazing okay. companies, uh, whether it was Relate IQ or whether it was MetaMind or whether it was Implicit or others, uh, we've been able to kind of put together this incredible fabric to create this artificial intelligence. That really needs to be looked at independently of what is going on with LinkedIn. With LinkedIn, you know, you, you know what happened in the first quarter. Their equity fell by 50%. Right. It became just a screaming buy. Um, it, it really triggered, you know, our M&A committee on the board to look at that. We got excited. Uh, we made our bid for LinkedIn. Uh, unfortunately, there was someone else who made a, link, right. a LinkedIn bid, too, that was higher than ours. So we did not win uh, LinkedIn. And uh, th those are really independent of what we're doing in terms of acquisition for innovation. And uh, that, that, was a, that was a very unique and special opportunity. Obviously, it would have been you know, extraordinary uh, uh, in terms of size and scale. All right. Well, we got to leave it there. Thank you so much, Mark, for coming on, explaining the quarter. Look forward to seeing you at The Force. Jim, Thank great you. to see you. I hope to see you at Dreamforce. Oh, absolutely. You, too, is playing. All right. I know. I know. Better than the boat. Thank you so much, Mark. Good to see you. That's Mark Benny. I'm Chairman and CEO of Salesforce. Hey, everybody's back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.